Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Commissioner's Report. I have a hectic week to recap, so let's start right away. The Commissioner has been missing for over a week now, and I must say, his paid leave is wearing quite thin, and he should think about coming back. If you haven't heard the story, the Week 2 Alabama game necessitated dispatching a large amount of human resources at the Lil's expense, unknowingly including the Commissioner, who immediately embarked on a mission involving a jar of pickles and several murder suspicions. When one looks at the superficial details, the conclusion arrived at is that Mr. Cowie has either held the Commissioner hostage or buried him underneath several tons of gravel with the help of the unwitting Luso Holmes class. The Craigmeyer pickle stand also disappeared in its inaugural week of sales, leading to some speculation as to the origin of their product. That is all the information on the case that the legal and investigative teams have released at this time. On the field this week, a very unusual game day played out. Houses Rao and Rush fought to the bitter end. With a player of the week performance from Jacob Offerman and a game-saving catch by Dean Craigmeyer to end the game, we saw the first ever time that House Rush has not lost a kickball game in their history. It was a tie. On the central field, the There Can Be Only One game involved much loudness from both sides, with the game involving a strikeout on each side and an ejection of the player that shall remain unnamed out of respect. That means your sportsmanship lesson of the week, brought to you straight from the competitive balance board, is that the umpires are important parts of the game and should be treated with respect. Without them, there is no game. Remember that calls are final and that the umpire cannot see if you are jumping around and screaming in between them and the field of play. As for the other two games, it seemed House Torbeck could pull off an upset to redeem their rough start to the season but suffered a walk-off at the hands of House Fund. Finally, on the Alabama field, House Meyer provided only stats for Matthew Devaney, requiring the others to be constructed by an algorithm for which the Duckworth-Lewis-Stern method of cricket fame was employed. Now that the numbers are in, we can take a look at the rest of the big board. The standings have finally shaken up, with the tie complicating things. House's rec and fund remain the teams to beat, and the once great House Torbeck is now tied for seventh. Several weeks still remain, though, and next week's matchups are thus. House Rec is the heavy favorite on the East Field, as is House Fund in the Central under the leadership of Coach Moeller. And House Torbeck hopes it can finally bounce back in the West. Keep your head on a swivel, though, because the bookies say that House Rush just might win their first game ever on the Alabama turf. On to fantasy. Retired coach of House Bailing, Ellie Freeman, still holds the title in the Black Division. Michael Lind has broken through to the top spot in gold. Hudson Butterfield has retaken the white title. And Jacob Offerman has created an even more impressive player of the week total. Four for four, a triple away from the cycle, and five RBI. The last thing I would like to talk about is just how exceptional the athletes we have here at the Lil are. Game day fell on the ancient revolutionary French holiday known as the Feast of Opinions, where it is encouraged to make jokes about those in power. And today, I'd like to dedicate mine to the MLB. Aaron Judge, the league leader in OPS as of the 21st, would be 98th place in OPS in the Lil. Everyone in the Lil who has recorded a hit has a higher OPS than him, and these numbers were achieved in three games, much less than the hundred or more judges played this year. With that, I leave you for this week and go back to poring over stats and hoping the commissioner makes his return. Have a little fun.